Today we take a look at arguably one of the most famous London gun makers, the firm of Holland Holland. And uh, the firm of Holland Holland was established by Harris Holland uh, in 1835. And his, uh, his father actually was a, a musical organ builder. And Harris actually started his business as a tobacco uh, wholesaler. And uh, first uh, started just retailing firearms and then went into uh, one of his cousins, uh, went into business with one of his cousins. And they actually started building uh, firearms and uh, filed a whole bunch of patents and uh, became a very, very successful uh, firearm dealership. Now you'll see on the on the top of this uh, trade label, it says winners of all the prizes in the Field Rifle Trials London uh, in 18. 83 and that really set them up uh, you know once you start uh, winning com uh, competitive uh, shooting with a specific firearm uh, that specific year set Holland Holland up uh, as somebody who built a rifle that was uh, really performing well in the hands of a competent shot and uh, yeah after that you know it was it was just history and uh, you know if we look at the I'm going to call it the two time spans of Holland Holland. You'll see on this uh, trade label uh, their address at 98 New Bond Street. That was really during the period where they developed the Royal um, firearms. And we'll take a, a look at one of the Holland Holland Royal 12 gauge shotguns in just a second. Uh, but that was kind of the, the address they used. And, and after that, they changed uh, retail shop addresses once or twice uh, but became very very well known at these addresses these addresses feature on all of their firearms they're engraved in the rib or on the barrel uh, Holland Holland also participated in the Second World War uh, where they actually took Lee Enfields and uh, was instrumental in creating uh, the sniper rifles so they actually uh, found a way to put a, a stable telescope uh, on that uh, Lee Enfield. Also put in a, a wooden cheek riser and turned them out uh, for the uh, the army as sniper rifles. Now uh, Holland Holland in 2021 uh, was actually sold to the Beretta Holding Company, uh, but I think they will uh, be very unwise if they if they tinker with this with a specific brand. Two of the rifles we were looking at today originate from the 33 uh, Bruton Street address uh, from Holland Holland and that is where they're located today. Uh, so if you want to visit the Holland Holland gun room, uh, being 2021, unfortunately that gun room is closed due to COVID at the moment, but I see they're anticipating opening it later this year. So, uh, but that is the location of, of Holland Holland today. And the two rifles we'll be looking at were both manufactured. One was in the, the late 1960s, uh, the other one in the early 1970s. And both of the, uh, the rifles are actually of the takedown uh, model, one in uh, caliber 300 Super and the other one in caliber 375 Holland and Holland. For those interested in more detailed history about the firm of Holland and Holland, there's an exceptionally uh, detailed book by Donald Dallas. Uh, it's called Holland Holland the Royal Gunmaker uh, The Complete History. Uh, this book uh, really starts right at the beginning. Uh, it has a lot of uh, history on the Holland uh, family, how the firm of uh, Holland Holland was established. It covers off uh, the majority of the patents uh, and then it, it really focuses on uh, the marketing effort in establishing the Royal uh, type of, of, of gun and, and uh, at the end of the book it actually has a really good detail on a lot of uh, serial numbers all of the different trade labels and all of the different patents that are owned by Holland Holland so really a good source of reference uh, if you're interested in a little more more history about the uh, about the firm the three rifles we're going to take a look at today are in the following order uh, the first one is a 12 gauge, uh, two and a half inch chambered um, Holland Holland Royal from the late 1800s, followed then by the uh, 300 or 30 Super, 
uh, which today is equivalent to the 300 Holland Holland or better known as the 300 Holland Holland. Now there are some very subtle differences in chamber dimensions between the 30 Super uh, and the actual 300 Holland Holland. Um, however, uh, once you fire form a uh, 300 Holland Holland case in the 30 Super, you can actually reload it very simply, very easily. Uh, you can use the same um, type of uh, loading tables as the internal dimensions, dimensions are not, not vastly different. And then we'll, we'll conclude with the, uh, the actual uh, very well-known and well-respected uh, 375 Holland Holland, uh, which I think is, has become the, I'm going to call it the number one uh, dangerous game rifle uh, used in Africa just purely because of its versatility. Uh, shoots a 300 gram bullet and as you can see from the uh, the actual uh, components on the table there you know at the back uh, Swift A-frame makes really good 300 grain uh, bonded uh, bullets as softs uh, you know most manufacturers reload them and then right in the front uh, are some of the uh, solids from uh, Woodley uh, which are monometal solids but the, the amount of components available for reloading a 375 Holland Holland today is just absolutely vast. And, you know, it is really no surprise that it has become the, the one battery gun uh, for people going on an African safari that may include buffalo uh, or some other dangerous game. The three Holland Holland guns we're going to look at today are from the left, a two and a half inch chambered 12 gauge Holland Holland Royal shotgun and it's hard to believe that that rifle is more than 100 years old still functioning perfectly in hunting pheasants. In the center we have a 19, late 1960s uh, 300 Super uh, and on the far right we have the classic 375 uh, Holland and Holland. The 12 gauge Royal came uh, cased in a full, in a leather case. Uh, again, the address of 98 New Bond Street was engraved in the rib. Uh, for the rest of it, uh, it's very clear that this uh, case contains everything that you need to maintain this rifle. It has the oil cleaning patches, uh, snap caps, oil bottle, uh, and silver cloth. Uh, I guess the, the pricing of these rifles from an early uh, lifespan really motivated people to take care of them really well so it's hard to believe that this is a, a shotgun that is more than a hundred years old and is still in really really good condition functions perfectly and uh, you know with several manufacturers still turning out two and a half inch 12 gauge shotgun shells uh, paper wrapped uh, it, it makes these guns fun to shoot and uh, and fun to own uh, just one final observation on this specific gun. Uh, if we look at the engraving and just the amount of time that must have gone into engraving this rifle, and especially if you're looking at the fences there, uh, a lot of fine workmanship going into this and just a, an absolute pleasure to own and, and shoot a rifle like this or shotgun like this. Both the 300 and the 375 uh, we'll be reviewing today uh, come as takedown ac uh, action rifles and uh, it's a very simple mechanism you basically use a coin uh, to undo one screw on the front end of the magazine plate and once that screw is uh, undone uh, the whole rifle comes apart in, in just two pieces uh, with the magazine uh, plate magazine box being an integral part of your stock and then the barrel in action will come apart as a separate uh, unit. Here we have the uh, 300 Holland Holland completely disassembled and in its leather case. Uh, you can see it's a substantially uh, shorter case uh, because you only need the barrel in action is the longest part of this rifle so very easy to accommodate in a nice compact case again everything else is in there. So if we look at a couple of uh, Holland Holland characteristics, uh, I think first and foremost on these uh, actions uh, that were made for takedown rifles, you can see on the far left uh, on this video image, you can see the additional 
uh, side safety uh, to accommodate uh, you know the use of a scope so you, it'll it comes with both a flag safety and then also it has that slide safety uh, which is clearly visible there if we move down the action another characteristic of holland holland uh, if you look at most other uh, rifle manufacturers they would have the flip up islands uh, on the muzzle end of their rear island uh, from a rear sight perspective with holland and holland they actually have the flip up on the uh, side of the action or the trigger uh, so your flip up is closer to you uh, and the standard fixed blade uh, is the furthermost uh, portion of that uh, rear island if we if we if we go to the rest of the barrel you can see this was a 1960s rifle uh, it has the big um, eyelet so you actually have a, a rifle sling that contains a leather thong that's straight through there a very very quiet uh, way to carry your rifle and then obviously one of the characteristics of Holland Holland uh, when we look at the the front end uh, it has that flip over protector of your front sight uh, which has a little press down button and you can fold it back to expose the, the complete uh, uh, front blade but a uh, very very effective way to protect your your front sight uh, just looking at uh, a very unique yet unfortunately expensive way to mount a scope uh, most Holland Holland rifles uh, they were built by Holland Holland carries the Holland Holland side mount system the side mount system is very reliable in getting you to you know keeping the uh, scope uh, at exactly the same point of aim once you put it back however those sites are just unbelievably expensive to uh, to actually uh, manufacture and order so it adds greatly to the expense of the the actual rifle uh, looking uh, at the wood on this rifle again uh, you know Holland Holland true to quality uh, unbelievable quality of, of, of wood on this rifle it comes with a uh, leather covered recoil pad and I'll flip over that gun in just a second just so we can have a look at the actual uh, magazine uh, floor plate and assembly there uh, all of these guns uh, comes with a a magazine uh, assembly box that is made from aluminum makes the gun light and uh, easy to carry uh, indicates how many cartridges it takes in there um, and it also is a component that stays uh, with the actual uh, stock once you disassemble it uh, both of these guns came with grip caps that open up and carries a spare uh, front side assembly uh, and I'll just flip it over just to kind of explain the, uh, the actual way that this rifle is put together. So you'll see at the back end here, uh, there's a, almost like a, a metal shoe there, uh, about a quarter of an inch of steel that is kept in place by the rear uh, screw that keeps your uh, magazine and trigger guard into the wood. And that forms the, I'm going to call it the anchor. For the action because the, the action just slips in underneath that lip and then uh, gets bolted with that front uh, big screw and the rifle is, is put together and, and ready for action the 375 although it is a takedown rifle actually comes in a full length leather case uh, so it's a, it's a little bit of an anomaly uh, but nevertheless again you know everything fits into this rifle case uh, perfectly as would be expected and again uh, very quick and easy just a quick look at that front uh, side protector uh, you just press in that little protruding screw there and you can fold down uh, the actual uh, uh, side protector cover this rifle was made in the 1970s so a little bit of a different on the barrel band there's a, a different type of uh, sling uh, attachment it actually takes a, a sling with a uh, like a belt so it's a little easier a little more modern again uh, this rifle is no different than the 300 with regards to rear island configuration it has the side mounts 
uh, scope uh, from Holland to Holland. Again, it has the aluminum cover at the bottom. And uh, again, it has the uh, grub cap that houses an additional front blade, uh, front sight. Again, woodwork is exquisite. And again, it comes with a, a leather covered uh, recoil, uh, recoil pad. And again, you know, uh, these Holland and Holland rifles were functional items. Uh, so great rifles to hunt with, uh, uh, really uh, a pleasure to own, pleasure to shoot um, and uh, you know may they just go uh, from success to success with these rifles. I hope you enjoyed today's session and until we meet again, stay safe and happy hunting.